Okay, so day two, um, day two went pretty darn awesome, I'd say. Um, I guess everything became really routine by about the fourth day, but day two felt like first day was done, everything was okay, you know, we all made it out alive, so day two, we were just like, all right, like, let's go, let's take the next step. So when we got out there on the second day, it was just more of the same navigating and riding for 10 hours or so. Um, 3,500 feet of climbing, which was a little less than the first day, but a little more than average still. Uh, physically, I was holding up pretty darn well. I wasn't too concerned yet. Uh, you have to find kind of a rhythm of, you know, how to ride the bike. And there's about six or seven positions on my bike that I can sit or stand or crouch over the bike to actually keep me from you know getting a sore bottom or sore back sore neck that sort of thing so you have to change up your position all day but yeah other than that the riding itself was very routine um i think the second day was a lot of like backwoods kind of roads a lot of hills but nothing crazy um ended up in a small town called new alexandria and uh, when we got there, was it? We showed up to this Presbyterian church. It was regular Alexandria. Oh, Alex yeah, it wasn't new Alexandria. But I show up there, and John says he's in the church or something. He texted me earlier and said where he was and everything. So I get there, and this guy comes around the corner the second I pull up to the place. And he comes up to me, and he's like, I'm taking my helmet off. I'm not really paying attention to him. What did he say? He's like... What are you doing? Lollygagging. Yeah, he said something like, oh, I took your sorry lollygagging butt long enough to get here or something like that. Like, it was just really funny. And I thought he was the pastor, but I mean, he wasn't. But still, like, that was really funny. And then he tells me, uh, John's inside pissing around with his wife or the preacher or something. I was like, what? Yeah, but <laughs> I just got in there. The people were really nice, and it turned out they were going to let us stay in the church instead of camping out behind it like we had done the first night where we just set up, you know, the air mattress in the van, and then we lock up everything else around us and stuff like that. This time they were just like, oh, yeah, you can, you know, stay in the nursery or something. Just stay anywhere in the building, which, you know, gave us access to a bathroom, gave us access to places to wash and whatnot and let us sleep indoors in general it's just really nice and having the ability to recharge our phones and just be inside somewhere was just a great comfort to us then they also told us to call um the presbyterian pastor there at the church ernie walls that guy was pretty darn sweet we called him and told him when i got there and he came by and picked us up and then he took us out to dinner, which was awesome. It was just really cool because we got to talk with him. He gave us a little brief history lesson on the Presbyterian church. And then it turns out this guy's got like, he's just got a wild background. The guy was from, where is he from, Tennessee? Or, yeah. yeah, he's from Tennessee. He, geological. Uh, yeah, he's like a geological um, scientist or something like that I don't know the exact terms for that stuff but yeah he was a scientist and then he became a Presbyterian pastor moved up to Pennsylvania he's been in Pennsylvania about 10 years or 11 years or something like that and uh, his his sons or uh, a lot of his family members were in the military so him and John immediately connected on that level and they spent the whole dinner talking about that stuff and we explained to him what the nonprofit was and what the goals of this project were and everything like that. So it was just a good night getting to meet some people. And it was almost um, a bad thing, though, in a sense, because we got so spoiled. We got spoiled the first night and then we got really spoiled the second night. So it kind of set us up with these expectations of, you know, like, oh, everywhere we go, like somebody's going to buy us a meal or somebody's going to give us a place to stay indoors or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was like, it was probably more than we should have been given, like more than we deserve, I guess. I don't know how to put it, but yeah, it just, it's just the way it affected us, but it wasn't like, 
we were like, oh, we'll take it back or something. Like, it was still, like, really nice of them to do. But overall, in the long run, I think it gave us a little bit of a uh, indifferent perception of, like, what people are going to be towards us. But, uh, yeah, overall, like, the second day was pretty darn good. The riding was easy, easy or normal. I don't know how to was describe that, was it. Was that the day with Woodward? Yes, Woodward. We went to Camp Woodward. That was uh, pretty special specifically to me at least I know like I'm a huge fan of action sports I love watching like Brian Deegan Ken Block um Travis Pastrana Ryan Sheckler Nigel Houston like I love watching like anything that's on X Games that is my sport any of those sports I love it all specifically I'm into mountain biking like that's what I do obviously I like biking so a lot of that stuff those athletes all go to places to train you know they have to find facilities and there's not that many facilities in America, at least, that have the right features for the competitions they do, such as the mega ramp from like the X Games. There's only like three or four mega ramps in the country. One of them belongs to Bob Bernquist. There's another one at someone else's private facility. And then there's another one at Camp Woodward West, which is out in uh, not Oregon, it's out in California. But there's a Camp Woodward East, which has a smaller mega ramp, but they've got, it's basically just a gigantic campground, like something you go to for a summer camp, but it's all skateboarding, BMX, wakeboarding, gymnastics, like go-karts. It's like, it's like if X Games was a campground, you know, with camp counselors and all that, and I, I don't even know how else to describe it. It's just a big, awesome, freaking cool place. For people to go and practice and get better and work with other athletes and just really improve on their skills and push themselves to new levels so we got a tour of that place and it was just insanely awesome to see all these people definitely somewhere i want to go in the future again to check out maybe even you know go learn some new skills there myself but uh yeah that was a good highlight of the day for us and uh yeah i guess that and the the meal out with the Presbyterian pastor, that was pretty much the two was also a major bike things. Rider. Which bike rider? Ernie, he rode north to south, south to north, or whatever. I don't know if I came across that guy. Ernie Walls. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. He had the stories about, uh, was it like him and a group of people, they got like caught out in the ice storm or something. They had to like break into like a truck stop bathroom and they had to use whatever a uh, one of those hand dryer things. They had to keep pressing the button to turn the heat on. So all night they had to do that kind of stuff. And then they sent money in anonymously to get it replaced or fixed because they broke it or whatever to get in there. So yeah, it's just cool little stories like that and things that we can relate to that, you know, unless you brought up these kind of stories, like you wouldn't really just ask about them. But it turns out like these random people have like these crazy cool relevant connections to the things we're doing so stuff like that is just like little treasures little things we're gonna remember down the road and there was there was a Buick guy yes Buick guy there's a a really cool looking shop where this guy had like it was like a really retro shop where the guy hadn't really changed the appearance or style of his Buick not really a dealership but a uh it's a car shop. He hadn't really changed the appearance of the building in like 40 or 50 years. So he turned on all the neon lights and stuff and it looked really, really cool. But yeah, those are some of the highlights from day two and uh, check out day three.